All right, so it's time to play some Ravenspire. First thing you do in any, any game of Ravenspire is you go ahead and roll to move. So the Reaver is going to move three spaces. Now, she can move anywhere, but what she knows is that when a foe appears, a tough monster that she's very much not ready to defeat to fight, it will appear coming down those stairs. So as you move, you just want to be aware of that if you're not trying to trying to fight the foes. So either way, I've got to move three spaces, and so it's kind of equidistant, but that's where she moves. All right, so she's still in the outer dungeon, and she goes ahead and draws her hand of cards. All right, so she's got some, she's got one fight, she's got three skill, and she's got one, two, three, four charm she can spend this turn. Well, let's see what she runs into. I'll go ahead and draw an encounter card from the deck, and what I find is an Onyx Ring. Now, this is a pretty good card. Uh, it's worth two skill or two charm when I spend it, but first I've got to uh, obtain it out of the dungeon, and it looks like it's going to require skill for me to obtain. So let's see if the Crimson Reaver is skillful enough to obtain that card. She totally is, and she will spend three skill to match the three skill right there. Take that card and go ahead and put it in her discard pile. All right, so she's done that. Now, since this is the first turn, only one space was used, and it will be filled again at the end of my turn, but for now, it stays blank until I'm completely done. Now, the rest of the stuff I have are charm and one fight. Well, one of the ways to rotate the board is to spend two charm to rotate the board a random amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend this two charm card, place it in my discard pile, and rotate the board six spaces. Well, that is a lot. So I want to move that stairs to there, so at least I got it a little closer. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's two spaces closer than it was, but it's still not aligned. Now, one of the things about rotating the board is you can only use charm or skill to rotate it once. So I, even though I have two more charm in my hand, I cannot rotate the board again. Another option is if you want to spend 10 total of any type of card, then you can actually roll the die and rotate the board up to that many spaces instead of exactly that many spaces. But that's pretty expensive to spend 10 units of any type, so can't do it yet. All right, so well, that's the end of my turn, so I'm going to go ahead and discard the rest of my cards and draw a new hand for next turn so I can look over my cards. And now I'm ready to refill this spot with another card. And what comes up but the Silver Sword? I can't buy it because it's the end of my turn, but it's good to know it's there. On to round two. Round two of Raving Spire. Well, first things first, I had to reshuffle my discard pile because I ran out of cards in my battle deck. We only had 12 cards. She draws seven at a time. So you just reshuffle and you continue drawing cards until you fill up your hand. And I actually got the Onyx Ring from last turn back into my hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and slot the Onyx Ring. It is a magical relic. It says relic up there and also down here at the bottom it shows where it can be slotted, and I have that matching spot on my battle mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here. I can still use it this turn if I want, but that allows me to save it for next turn if I don't end up spending it. Next thing I'll do is go ahead and roll to move. Move three spaces. So I'm going to, again, try to stay away from this staircase space because the foes appear there if they come down, and uh, you do not want to fight them with a hand uh, as weak as mine at the start of the game. All right, now I will go ahead and draw another encounter card from the foam mat. And this time I have leather boots. Now, it looks like that's two fight and two charm to buy leather boots. Or I could buy the silver sword as well. So both cards are options for me now. Well, I have some skill and I have plenty of fight, but I don't have enough charm to buy that card. I could, if I use the onyx ring, I could spend two charm from there and then two fight to buy that, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to use brute force to go ahead and get that silver sword. Now, normally to get the silver sword, I'd need five charm. I do not have five charm, but 
in the middle of the card is a little eight. And that is the brute force number I need to buy that card. So I can spend cards of any color to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I actually have nine. So I will just leave that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can spend all of these to go ahead and take the silver sword and put it into my discard pile. That leaves one skill card and the onyx ring available for me to spend. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and save that onyx ring, so I'm just gonna end my turn and discard my one skill card. Now, I need to refill that space, because you never leave a space closed, and uh-oh, I drew a chaos card. Well, chaos cards don't stay in place, they actually summon foes. In this case, I'll take a foe marker and place it on the stair space. Then I check out the text on the card, which says place on the foe deck and add two fight to the next foe drawn, and the foe is worth an additional loot card. So this boosts the next foe drawn. So this foe is even more dangerous than normal. I'll go ahead and put it over here on the foe deck so I remember. And then I have to still fill that space so I draw another card. If I drew another chaos card, that foe would move. But in this case, I've drawn Templeton Peck, who is an adventurer. And special thing about adventurers is they can be slotted in any spot on your battle mat. So they're very valuable cards to get. All right, since there's a foe on the board, I have to go ahead and move him. And he moves D3 spaces. So he will move one space directly towards the active player, or me. Since he's directly opposite, I can choose which way he goes. All right, now I draw another hand. Five, six. She draws seven, so I'm gonna go ahead and reshuffle these and move on to my next turn. All right, so now we've been adventuring for a while and we are ready to take on the spire level of the tower. Now, the Crimson Reaver has already aligned all the passages, so she's moved up through the tower and had been adventuring on her way. She's also slotted some items in her battle mat. Uh, she's got a silver sword saved, onyx ring, and she's taken over Boot Hill. And this is a dungeon spot where when she uses that card, it doesn't go away. It just flips over after she uses it, and then she can turn it back over the next turn. So dungeon cards remain in play unless another card effect instructs otherwise. All right, well, first thing she's going to do is go ahead and roll to move. She got a three. Well, we got a foe right here. If we moved into the foe, we could fight it right away. But for now, I'm going to stay away from the foe and move over there. Because the foe will move at the end of my turn and could very well move into me. All right, so we're in the spire level, which is these, this wood-themed level over here. We're going to go ahead and draw a card and set it right there. Incense. All right, well, she's got to make room for that in this spire level or buy it outright. Otherwise, she'll lose d6 sanity. Well, the first thing I notice is that we have an orcish barbarian here. Now, these are adversaries. If I don't take care of him on this turn... I will lose one sanity from my sanity track. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take care of that if I can. Let's see what we got here. We got a sharp knife. Stout villager can help us out. That's two of the six fight I need. And looks like I got a water skin. All right. So there's six fight. I need to take out the Orcish Barbarian. So I'll go ahead and put those in my discard pile. Then I'll look at the Orcish Barbarian's rule set. You don't actually collect monster cards. They say resolve card upon collection, and you deal with whatever text is here. In this case, I automatically gain one loot card, and then I banish this card. So I'll go ahead, banish that card, and gain one of these loot cards. What did I get? I got the Hydraulic Geared Suit. Now, one of the cool things about the loot cards is they have a Vorpal value instead of a Fight, Skill, or Charm value. And I, that's wild, and I can use that as any type when that comes back in my hand. It can also slot this one as armor, but first I've got to put it in my discard pile and it's got to come back up through. All right, so that means that the incense card can now slot into the space and I'm in no danger of losing sanity for not being able to keep the dungeon clear. And I can look at my, my remaining cards. I've got a secret apothecary, which I could swap with Boot Hill in my dungeon slot if I wanted to. Uh, an ancient shrine I can also do that with or spend them and some leather armor. Well, I don't have an armor card slotted, so I'll go ahead and put that there, save that for my next turn. And I think I'll go ahead and buy that incense card. It's always good to have a 
to charm around when you're not that charming of a character. So there we go. I only say that because she starts with a little charm. And then the rest of these cards, I don't have anything I want to do with, so I'm going to go ahead and discard them. And then I will have to refill this space. So I have no cards in my hands. Refill this space with a new card. It's going to be a leather skull cap. And then roll the faux movement, which is going to be one space. It's D3, so it moves one space towards me. I will draw a new hand of cards. And then that is the end of my turn. So I've been adventuring for a while, and uh, I've gotten some pretty good cards. My battle map is pretty well stocked, feeling pretty confident. Got some good cards in my hand I just drew last turn. So I think this turn, I'm going to go ahead and move into that foe rather than wait for him to hunt me down. So the first thing I do is, like normal, I roll. And I only rolled one, but that's all I needed. So I move right on to the foe space. Now, because I'm in a foe space, uh, I don't encounter the encountering like normal. Instead, I have to fight a foe. So I go over here and take a foe card from the foe deck. And let's see who I encounter. Well, looks like it's he who sees. Now, he who sees requires 11 charm to defeat. He also has a special rule that says roll 1d6. He who sees steals one of your adventure cards and receives its bonuses. Well, I rolled a 3, so he doesn't steal any of my adventure cards. And I did have an escaped acolyte on my battle mat, so I'm glad he didn't get him. All right. So it takes 11 charm to defeat this particular foe. What you'll notice is that there is no number in the middle. There's no brute force value for foes. They are all or nothing. You have to defeat them with their stats. So first things first, let's see what we got in our hand. We've got sharp knife isn't going to do me any good. So we'll just take that aside. It's just a two fight, two skill. Got a two fight card. Not going to help. Stout villager. He wants to help, but he only supplies fight. Secret apothecary. This isn't looking good. It's worth two skill right up in that corner. Uh, okay, here we go. We got an incense card that's worth two charm. We got a hydraulic geared suit that is worth two uh, Vorpal, which I can call charm. It also says if played with an attack card, double that card's effects, but unfortunately none of these are attack cards, so that doesn't apply. However, it's still worth four charm. We've got the Orc King's Bulwark, which is worth five charm, though it costs me one sanity to use. So I think I'll go ahead and pay that. I could discard it without doing that, but then I'll lose to the foe. And if I lose to the foe, I lose 2d6 sanity, which can drive you mad immediately. So it's better to go ahead and spend that one sanity. All right, but I still don't have enough to defeat the Rune Lord. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I look down on my battle mat and I can see I have the silver sword saved, which is worth three charm. So I can use that on the he who sees foe. That's 12 charm total. I defeat him. These go into my discard pile. And I gain the benefits at the bottom of the card, which is a tower key. I can now move through this door and into the center space and take on the final battle. And two loot cards. So I'll go ahead and draw those. I've got a runic axe and a crown of scintillating colors, which I put directly into my discard pile. And then discard this foe, and I now have a tower key, and I'm ready to enter the final part of the dungeon. 